may be seated in God's presence. Welcome to church this morning in Jesus' mighty name. Let's take it this morning from the book of Acts chapter 2 as we celebrate the Pentecost Sunday today. Acts chapter 2. We pick verse 1 and then we go backwards to chapter 1. How did chapter 2, verse 1 came to be? I am bringing to you today highlights of Pentecost. So today is Pentecost Sunday. We are celebrating Pentecost today. But we just want to see some highlights. What brought about all this called Pentecost Sunday? Because we celebrate Christmas. Everybody knows it's the birth of Jesus we are celebrating. We celebrate Easter. We are celebrating resurrection. We celebrate Pentecost Sunday, but it is not so much um, celebrated and glamorized. Because if it were Easter now, you would have seen eggs all around. If it were Christmas, you would have seen a lot of shining lights all around. Even those who don't know the Christ, they celebrate him more than those who are in the Christ. So now, but very few have understanding of Pentecost Sunday as another celebration period. Yes. So it is those who have insight into what that day, that great day, 50 days exactly, after this resurrection, after that Passover. Now, look at it, Acts chapter 2 and verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord. Let somebody say one accord in one place. They were all in one accord in one place. The day of Pentecost. It was a great day. There was none like it. And there can likely never be any. Because Jesus Christ himself was involved. But before this day happened, this day that we celebrate today, before it actually occurred, let's go backwards to Acts chapter 1. And let's see what Jesus said. Verses 4 through to 8. Acts chapter 1, 4 to 8. And being assembled together with them. Who was assembled together with them? Jesus was assembled together with his disciples. And being, that's why I said, let's go back to chapter 1. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, in quotes, you have heard from me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Let somebody say Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. But you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, Will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power. Let somebody say power. Who shall receive power? Point at yourself. I shall receive. Okay, let's keep talking of Jesus. But Jesus said, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. 
and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Hallelujah. Jesus met with his disciples where they were gathered together. They were with one accord. They were in one place. He appeared to them after resurrection. In fact, he stayed with them another 40 days after he resurrected. And then he told them that this thing will happen. And God is not a liar. What he says happens. Please note, where we read in verse 1 of the second chapter says, when the day was fully come, there is always a day in the life of a man. In the life of these disciples, it was their day. It was the day of their baptism with fire. John the Baptist up to now, like Jesus Christ was reminding them. When Jesus was speaking, they had no idea of what was going to befall them. So all the baptism they ever know or hear or imagine was the one where they would be immersed inside water. They had never been able to imagine that someone can be immersed in fire. Fire that did not consume the bush in the days of Moses. Fire that does not consume the physical body, but it overwhelms all your being. It takes you over. Fire that turns you you are not left to be the same after fire has dealt with you. The fire we are talking about here is power. Dynamo. From the word dynamo. Dynamis. Power. Generator. When you yourself have been engulfed, encumbrance by what was coming, Anyone who touches you touches fire. May encounter a brush, just a mere brush. You are not allowed to just go like that without, even when you are trying to go your own way and you are trying not to attract attention, something in his, is inside of you that cannot be ignored. Hallelujah. So that was what Jesus was preparing them for. But somebody like Peter, who was very, very fearful, he, he never knew what God was preparing, what was talking about. Even John, who laid his head, the disciple whom Jesus loved, laid his head on the chest of the master, all of them never understood what the master was talking about. In fact, rather than them having revelation of what Jesus was talking about, they were comparing logically what they could see physically. Because he had been described as who? The king of the Jews. So they were, they were just making imagination of earthly kingdom. They were thinking of some throne somewhere. They were thinking of maybe they should take this place, they should locate a place where they will not be a threat again to the existing kingdom. And so they were asking, that kingship that we are talking about, that dominion that we have always discussed, you know people love you, Jesus. You know you've done so much among everyone. Um, among they, they love you. There's no controversy. If election was to hold, in fact, no op opponent. Any attempt to oppose you, everybody loves you, Jesus. You will win. And so they were asking, will you at this time, now that they've killed you, now that you've resurrected, 
Will you now restore the kingdom to Israel? He told them, you don't understand. We are not talking of times. We are not talking of calendar. We are not talking of season now. What we are talking about is power. When the one who sets time and a calendar is ready, he will install authority where authority belongs to. He will choose the one who will be in charge. But right now, what I'm addressing is what? Power. Let somebody say power. power. The way you are sounding power doesn't mean to make it to be powerful. Power. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. So now, what was the precedent, antecedent? What were the antecedents? Jesus had been giving them some teachings before now. And one of the teachings that Jesus was giving them, you will find in the book of John chapter 16. He had been preparing their minds, even though they were of little understanding what Jesus was saying. When you read from verses 7 to 8, John 16, 7 to 8, and then we jump to verse 13, you discover that Jesus had actually been preparing them for such a day as this, called the day of Pentecost. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. So he was telling them, I'm not going to remain here with you. I'm going to go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, let somebody say the helper. The helper. Let somebody say the helper. the helper. Okay. We have some key words this morning. I have asked you to emphasize the Holy Spirit. I have asked you to emphasize power. And I've asked you to emphasize the helper here now. Follow me this Pentecost Sunday. The helper. And it will help somebody here this morning. Amen. Jesus said, if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, we are doing exchange. Once I depart, he comes. Amen? But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will do what? What will be his role? What will be his job description? Are you following me? His job description, his assignment will be to do what? Convict the world of sin and of righteousness. And of judgment. However, when he, the helper, he has another name here now. When he, capital H, he, is a person. The spirit. Have you seen another name now? The Holy Ghost. The power. The helper. That's number three. Now, who is he again? The spirit of truth. You know, for everything that is original, there is a counterfeit. So the way we are seeing first name, middle name, another name, another name. My daughter here has about three names before her son name. We named the baby not too long. Uh, well, the baby now is now becoming a, a big girl now. She had 50 names. 50 names. Five zero names. And every name was called on our naming ceremony. Every name given to us as pastors will be called during naming. Even though many of those names don't go beyond that day. But you must honor the father the grandmother, the in-law, the aunt, the niece, all of them did was they submitted their name. We will call. The only ones that we will not call out is the one that looks fetish 
ancestral demonic names that can provoke demons. We will not call that one. So we always ask, what is the name? Uh, what is the meaning of the name that you are giving to us? And so we see the various names. And that's what the devil does also. So you discover that in the studies in Sunday school, I don't know whether it, that the, the series is still continuing this morning now. You see the devil called the son of the morning. You see him also called what? Satan. You see him also calling, called what? The falling star or something. You also see him called another name, Lucifer. You also see him called another name. But you can see all those names. So there are names and there are names. Talking of the Pentecost, we are talking of the Holy Spirit. He is the comforter. He is the helper. He is power. He is the spirit of truth. He will convict the world of sin, of righteousness, of judgment. He is the spirit of truth. He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak. Hmm. And you cannot restrain him from speaking when it's time for him to speak. And he does not take permission. There's nothing like privacy and uh, data protection with him. What's that thing that they say? Consent. Uh, is it privacy and what we call it again? Uh, he doesn't know GDPR. He goes where he's not invited. He, there's no door, no rule, no law that holds him. Hmm. And because his assignment is to do what? Convict the world of sin. When somebody says, God cannot see me, and he continues to do what he wants to do in one corner, he goes and say, I, I don't mind being called a gossip. Name me any name you want to name me. But look at somebody that called me, that called herself for himself, my son or my daughter. See what he's doing behind the balloon here. Nobody here can see him because he's hiding behind. I know it. But be informed. And don't doubt me. This is his position. This is her position. This is what she does. And she comes to the front to put up, she comes to the open to put up a front, a different front. And so when the representative of God comes and say, so and so and so person, this is what the Holy Spirit is telling me about you. And that's where we are going to conclude, maybe in the second service, because my time is almost gone. Where you complete, where we end this morning is the place of repent ye. That's where we end later. Repent, but the, as the role, the duty, the responsibility is of the Holy Spirit. Are you following me? When he starts his function, his duty, and he performs his duty, he makes fear to fall. No fear in the church again. Because we are not experiencing Pentecost regularly. It is now seasonal. It is when we stir him up. It is when we give him recognition. Fear came upon the church in the days of the apostles. But I will not jump. Let's take it in steps. Let's go back to the scripture we are reading. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit now. It says, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of his own authority. But whatever he hears, he speaks. That's what took me to that illustration. And he will tell you what? Things to come. I don't ever doubt. And I'm never ever afraid to tell somebody anything that the Holy Spirit whispers to me. And I've been privileged time and time and time again over the years. For the Holy Spirit coming to whisper to me, to tell me what is to come. It takes me into the future. It takes me into the past. Hello? 
That is his role. That is his duty. I don't have the time to be relating to you some things that have happened to me after my youth service as a young um, graduate in those days. I mean, I finished very, very early. I finished before 20. And then I had already finished my, I mean, I was one of the, um, what's it called, leaders of Copper Fellowship in my church. And so a lot of things, God will be speaking to me about fellow youth coppers. So <laughs> there's a brother who is a tall banker today who was my roommate. The day he saw me almost five years or so, or ten years after, he said, ah, you are the Jeremiah of our time. <laughs> That's what I remember. He said, many things that you tell us happened, but those things were not told me for fun. Those were the days that we just lived our room. I was a teacher in a government technical college. We had, you know, field there. And we would just go in the night. I had another evangelist friend. I don't know where he is now. He's a bishop somewhere now. And he would just, we would just begin to pray on the field in that, in that school compound. We would just be praying as if we have no other job to do since we are coppers. Coppers do anything. Some other people were busy drinking their lives off. We were busy praying our lives. And so God will be telling us of things to come. Hello? That's the work of the Holy Spirit. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. I, w I wish people can wait for the two services so that we can trash this thing properly. But while you are here, today, the Pentecost Sunday, the church was born. We are celebrating the birth of the church. We will not be talking of the church if there is no Holy Spirit. Hello? Uh, Pentecost, 50 days after resurrection. Pentecost. When its day or celebration fully came, hmm, it was not celebrated like, like any other Jewish festival. It came in suddenly. The wind, there was a, a surge where the people were. That scripture says in verse, Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. And suddenly, there came what? A sound from heaven. Don't forget that Jesus Christ has said in John chapter 16 that when he goes, he will send him down. His coming was not going to be quiet. And it was not announced. Excuse me. Anything God wants to do in your life, he, he has no responsibility, he has no obligation to even tell you beforehand. And let me tell you something. Great things that God does in people's life happen suddenly. Suddenly. And it happens for people who fear him. It happens for people that walk with him. When it was going to happen for Joseph, he was in the prison. Psalms, chapter 1 and 5, please. He was in the prison. He wasn't expecting it. He was just living his normal life, loving God, fearing God. He was chapel footed inside the prison. Suddenly. Excuse me. The Lord can suddenly change in your favor. Ah, everything that they have been saying that is running contrary to you, contrary to you, contrary to you, just because of you who oppose Pentecostal power, they can change the law. It is human beings that made the law. And something stirred them up. Something was working inside somebody who spoke. And God can speak. The one who spoke through the mouth of a donkey. He, how much more will he speak through the mouth of a human being? Even if that human being is an unbeliever. Come on. God can go to any extent for something great to happen for you suddenly. It was sudden. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven. 
somebody will hear a sound. They will not be able to sleep until they perform in your favor. A sound from heaven. Let's go back to that Psalms 105. Joseph, he was just doing his normal relationship with God. He, he had thought, it does not matter. If I'm going to die in this prison, I, I have made up my mind. This is the consequences of me not sleeping with Potiphar's wife and not lying. I will stay here and die. And I will make heaven. It is physical leg you can chain and physical hands. You cannot chain my heart. My heart is loyal towards God. My heart is committed towards my king. So, just like the day of Pentecost came suddenly, in the book of Psalm chapter 105, suddenly, verse 12, please. Sorry, I didn't know I didn't mention the verse. The scripture says concerning the patriarchs, when they were few in number, indeed very few, strangers in it. Keep going. Let's keep going. Verse 13 now. They were strangers in the land. They went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people. And God set, gave a commandment in verse 14. He permitted no one to do them wrong. Yes, he rebuked kings for their sakes. Let's jump to verse, and, well, verse 15. It says, saying, do not touch my anointed ones. Now, the anointed ones are the empowered ones. They are the ones upon which the Holy Spirit has not only landed, but the Holy Spirit is walking inside of them. Are you, are you with me this morning? When you go to verse 20, please, you see the story of Joseph. Now, I just said something now. The Holy Spirit does not rest upon them alone. The Holy Spirit does what? It works from inside of them. Are you with me? And so the Holy Spirit was at work inside Joseph. The king could not sleep. The king sent. We prayed during the week on Tuesday. That prayer point was repeated, I think, again on Friday. We said we want a good news. Before I slept that day, I received my good news. Even though it was around 11.30 in the night, it still got to me that day. And without any prior discussion, in another person who took prayers took it again on Friday and repeated it that today. What am I trying to say? Good news is usually sent. And when it comes from the heaven, it was from the heaven that the Holy Spirit was sent. Are you with me? And his landing was not joke. What well, was no joke? Those who were too dignified among the uh, apostles, those who were too who could who they they have the power of uh, just talking. They were talking. They have a form of godliness, very very godly, but they lack the power thereof. Are you with me? So when he came, it was like a sound of a rushing mighty wind. When the word was sent by the king, release him. The ruler of the people let Joseph go free. You are going free by the power of the Holy Spirit this Pentecost Sunday. We are going to pause here and then we we'll continue in the second service. But before you go this morning, I'm going to, because some people will be leaving after this um, first service now. One thing I want you to know is that when God sets you free, nobody can hold you bound. That's why I said in Zechariah chapter 9, verses 11 and 12, as for you also, he was addressing you, you also, you. It is not just the apostles in their days. Because of the blood, the blood of Jesus, the covenant blood of Jesus. It says, I will set your prisoners free. He who set, Zechariah chapter 9, 11. He who set free, uh, Joseph, is sending the word of God to you suddenly this morning. And you are set free in Jesus' name. Amen. From the waterless pit, you are set free. He's saying, return to your stronghold, you prisoners of hope. 
even today, this Pentecost Sunday, I declare that I will restore double to you. I will restore double to you. Was it this morning we were talking of restoration? You can hold on to this scripture. In readiness, I will restore double to you. Hallelujah. When the king sends for you, double is your portion. When the king sends for you, the chains fall off. And when these things happen, they happen suddenly. Great things always happen suddenly. The creation of heaven and earth itself happens suddenly. It was by a sudden spoken of the word. Everything was chaotic before then. Everything was no order. There was no order. It was chaotic. It was darkness and it was water. And you know what happens whenever darkness mixes with water. Too bad if you cannot swim. Even if you can swim, you cannot see where you are going to. You don't know whether you are swimming into the mouth of sharks. <laughs> because everything was just chaotic. You don't even know whether you are swimming into a um, collection of pools, whether they empty pools in that place. Because you cannot see where you are swimming to. But suddenly, let somebody say suddenly. suddenly. Bow down your heads. It's time to pray. What do you want God to do in your life suddenly? It's by the spoken word of God. By the Pentecostal power. But it starts from the place of repent ye. Repent ye. For those who may not be in the second service. Even as, do, even as believers that come to church, there are several things that many of us still need to repent of. Repent ye. So that this power can be your portion. Ask the Most High God to grant you insight. Ask the Almighty God to grant you grace to be obedient for the needed change. Repent means take a U-turn. That road you are following, there's no way there. Stop. Turn around. Don't go that way again. Don't do that thing again. And many people are rebellious. They don't want to stop. Ask the Lord before it becomes too late for me. Help me to listen to the break, whatever you are using as a break. Let me be sensitive to the break you are applying into my life so that I will not be destroyed suddenly. And then call upon the name of Jesus, the God of suddenly. It send a word. Send a word. It was your spoken word that removed chaos from the surface of the earth. It was your spoken word that set the captive Joseph free. It was a spoken word, Lord Jesus Christ, that you used to prepare the disciples and then suddenly a wind from heaven came and the lives of the followers of Jesus were no longer the same. Don't let my life also be the same. This Pentecost Sunday, let it mark, Pentecost Sunday of this year, let it mark a new beginning, a new chapter in my walk with God. Let it launch me into greater heights. Let it make me to be closer drawn to Jesus. Let me see another dimension of you. Let me have a taste of your power. Let me experience your grace. Let me experience your glory. Thank you, Master. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Father, we thank you. We know that we have only scratched the matter on the surface. We have only done introduction. But the Holy Spirit, even with our introductory message, you are already ministering to people. You are already performing your work of conviction. You are already performing your work of guidance. As we are prayed, answer us. Amen. Holy Spirit, lead your people this week. Amen. And lead us aright. Holy Spirit, let us be hearing you. Holy Spirit, fill every heart here. Amen. Holy Spirit will not just be speaking in tongues. It will be accompanied with power to do. Amen. Power to accomplish. Amen. Power to impact. Amen. Power to get results. Amen. So shall it be in Jesus' name. We continue second service. God bless you.